Hi folks, I'm Cricket Lou, Chief Evangelist here at Infoblox. I wanted to tell you about a feature that the Blocks One DDI team recently released that I think is very exciting, Route 53 synchronization. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Route 53 is the standard DNS service in Amazon's AWS cloud. In addition to fairly plain vanilla authoritative DNS service, Route 53 has some interesting features, including health checking and failing over from one set of DNS records to another based on the results of those health checks, traffic management based on geographical proximity and latency, much like our DNS traffic control. Mostly though, Route 53 is ubiquitous and it's used by many, maybe a majority of the companies who rely on AWS. Now, many of our customers run Infoblox DNS solutions in AWS too, but some make do with Route 53. And of course, there are many prospects out there who already use Route 53. Now, it's no secret that Route 53's user interface uh, leaves something to be desired. I think even the biggest AWS fanboy would admit as much. Here's what the dashboard looks like. Apparently, they wanted to save on colored ink. Uh, and here, we can drill into hosted zones, zones that Route 53 manages and that its DNS servers are authoritative for. You can see I only have two of them, foo.example and bar.example. Let me just note in passing that this screen shows you how little configurability there is in Route 53. In the analogous view in Blocks one DDI's user interface, for example, you could configure all aspects of hosted zones like access control lists for queries, zone transfers, and dynamic updates. Though, I guess you don't need to configure some of those things for Route 53 because it simply doesn't support zone transfers and dynamic updates. Now, let's drill down into one of the zones to see its contents. This should look familiar to those of you who have used the Blocks one DDI or NIOS interfaces. There's not much in this zone, just a few records. If I click Create Record, you can see that the interface doesn't give me much help. For example, if I choose a record type with complex record specific data like NAPTER or SRV, all the UI does is show me an example. Blocks one DDI, by contrast, would display a very helpful wizard that would sanity check each field of the record specific data. Let me quickly show you that. Here, we're going to go into the analogous zone, foo.example, in Blocks one DDI, hit Create Zone, and NAPTER record. Look at all these helpful fields, service, flags, all of them are sanity checked. There's much more hand-holding than in the Route 53 console. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of Route 53's user interface, but as I said, a lot of people aren't. Our interfaces, both NIOS's and Blocks one DDI's, are leagues ahead. And wouldn't it be cool if our customers who use Route 53 could manage Route 53 zones through our user interface? Well, now they can. Blocks one DDI just introduced Route 53 synchronization, which allows bi-directional synchronization of data between Blocks one DDI and Route 53. That means that you can use Blocks one DDI to manage Route 53 hosted zones, and the changes will replicate to AWS. And you can also use the AWS console to manage those zones, and the changes will replicate back to Blocks one DDI. So some folks can keep using the clunky old Route 53 interface, and smart folks can use Blocks one DDIs which is the same interface they use to manage all their Blocks one DDI hosted zones. They can also avail themselves of the many useful features of the Blocks one interface, the intuitive wizards, which I mentioned, the recycle bin, role-based access control, and extensive logging. You wanna see it in action? First, I'll show you where I entered my AWS credentials, here under administration credentials. Now, these are my actual AWS credentials, so I won't show them to you so you don't run up my AWS bill. Next, here's where we configure third-party DNS providers, such as Route 53. It's under Manage, DNS, Third-Party DNS Providers. You can see that I've set one up for Route 53, called, not very creatively, Route 53, using my credentials. It syncs every minute with Route 53 and places those zones into the default view. Now let's go back to my foo.example zone. You can see the contents here, and if we switch to the Route 53 interface, you can see the same records there. Notice I've got a text record with the R data, gotcha. Let's change it to synced and see what happens if we go back to the Blocks one DDI user interface.
If we go back to the Blocks1 portal, you'll see that the record now shows synced. Now let's move that record to the recycle bin. If we go back to the AWS Route 53 console, we can see that it's gone, but it's a recycle bin. So we can return to the Blocks1 portal and restore it. Presto, it's back. And likewise, if we go back to the Route 53 console, it's back there too. You know, the recycle bin isn't really a perfect metaphor for how this works, is it? I mean, I have a recycle bin under the sink next to the trash, and I almost never take something out of my recycle bin and put it back on the shelf. But anyway. It'd be better if current AWS customers could easily purchase Blocks1 DDI to manage their Route 53 DNS infrastructure, wouldn't it? Well, thanks to the hard work of our business development team, AWS customers are now able to buy Blocks1 DDI in the AWS marketplace. So that's our new AWS Route 53 synchronization. In my opinion, it's a terrific feature and will make the product that much more useful, enabling customers to unify their DNS management with Blocks1 DDI. And of course, It'll help cement our position as the single source of DDI truth in their organizations. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.